Brian, you're going to have to review. I've been drinking. Dragon fight! I don't think he does it that much. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see your camera's in the way. I'm I'm drunkle. I can't do much more than be drunk and be an uncle. <laughs> I, I don't have magic axe powers. <laughs> Who's gonna hold this here? Oh, your camera the whole time so you can't see it. Oh, hold on. Are you, you're not actually gonna break them, are you? Fuck yeah. Oh, that one's white. There we go. Wow. Hello, welcome back to the 186th episode. Good, bad, or bad, bad show. Watch terrible movies, tell you should too. I'm your host, uh, Lokaber. Lokaber. I'm your host, Lokaber, the Destroyer. Uh, who is going to die of heat stroke before this episode ends, as will Kyle, who is drunkle. I've been drinking. I've also been dying of fucking heat exhaustion. <laughs> heat exhaustion. You have like eight like, layers Yeah. On. It's like, hey, hey, Kyle, we're, we're going to be in a hot studio. Why don't you wear like a, you know, multiple layers with like flannel and sweater or something? I, I'm wearing all, I got like three layers and it's chain mail, Kyle. It's oh, so yeah. And you got that shitty pleather, too. <laughs> This is a uh, $30 uh, Spirit Halloween special. I was like, they got the guy with, they have a chainmail coif. We're going for it. <laughs> we're, we're fucking going for it. Oh, we're not doing Dragon Fight, obviously, because we've already done that. Uh, and also the axe, the only axe they had kind of sucked. It doesn't, it doesn't. I was hoping they'd have a more, like, intricate A more axe axe. I mean, it's fine. It's a fine axe, but it's not like. It's like a hatchet. It's yeah, size wise, it is more of a hatchet, but it is. Uh, it's not too far off. His just had a spike because his was also too short. Like mm -hmm. it was like he was using it with two hands. Anyways, doesn't matter. The episode we're talking about today on our 2023 Halloween spooktacular. Shh, Brian, we can't let them know. Oh yeah, sorry. Shh. Th that's the name of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> If you talk or text, you're next. What a shitty name for this. Film. It's terrible. It's terrible. I like everything about this movie. It's terrible. Kyle, I fucking hated this movie. I fucking hated where this, this movie. Where did this suggestion come from? It didn't come from anywhere. This is a Brian special that oh, I just stumbled across. Oh, so Brian, across. we know we can blame directly for this. I, just, I got 20 minutes into this film and wanted to just blow my brains out. Yes, you're not wrong. <laughs> this is one of the worst movies we've watched in a while. It's terrible. God, those crazy checks are pretty messed up. Hey, hey, hey I'm check. Well, part check. Sorry. Hey. Hey. I'll, uh... <laughs> I'll have to make it up to you and take you to the movies sometime. Oh, they're playing Blowout at the New Bev tonight. You want to go? Let's talk about why, because <laughs> that's the whole <laughs> premise of the show. So oh. this film uh, for 2014, just titled Shh. Uh, it is written and directed by Jason Rutherford. Uh, I believe this is his only feature film credit. Uh, the other is, oh, wait, hold on. I just remembered a thing. D is it a little light in the jack-o'-lantern? Yay! Is it in the background here? I don't, I don't know. I can't see your viewfinder. I got a lens in my way. It is. It's blocked okay. from the microphone a little bit, but it says Katie. It's Katie. Yay! <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> So it's directed by Jason Rutherford. This is his only feature film credit as director. He did uh, apparently direct a documentary about I Grindhouse movies. Couldn't just imagine called why. Grind. <laughs> so we're just going to get into it because I don't know what else to say about this movie other than to talk about it as quickly yeah. as possible and then never talk about it again. <laughs> let's, let's, make a let's make a film super cheap in the 30 mile zone. Yes. Uh, and it's you don't. 
Although to act like they did anything in the regards like food services, yeah, no, I was about to say ridiculous. The fact that it was in the TMZ does not matter at all because this is just like a person with a camera. <laughs> just be careful out there. You. <laughs> and I am. I guess I'll see you around. Okay. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Like a I, single person. I guarantee you he did get one uh one uh like thing of money, probably like two or three grand from like the LA film commission or whatever, because he showed like the theaters and stuff like that. Yes. Or so, I, even then I don't think so. Even then it just feels like maybe it's 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 like vacation footage that they I I don't know, man. Yeah. I'm one of the many struggling filmmakers in this town trying to find a way into the business. Los Angeles is the film repertory capital of the world. Any given night, you can see classic films on the big screen. But we open up in these credits, uh, and we immediately cue the the like rip off uh, Halloween like theme song. It is like the the Halloween the, theme, the but like something. slightly different. Yeah. Uh, all of that is over the opening credits, which we're, are just using the very first result when you search "bloody" God. on Defont. That is like literally the, the yeah. first thing you would find. It's just that. Sorry, I think it actually may just be the second font when you click on horror fonts on the font. I'm not sure that's the exact same one, but it's close enough. It's great. Um, then we get to the opening of the movie and we get a voiceover. And this blew my mind. The opening shots, we get this voiceover and it's the shots we get matching with the voiceover are so on the nose. It's comical. And I don't think... Here's the thing. I want us to get ahead of this right now. This movie is, I don't think, intentionally bad. I will say I think it intentionally doesn't care if it's good. Yes. To some extent. But it also takes itself seriously, I think. It, to me. Yes. It feels like it's not like... I don't know, man. Because if, it, if it's intentionally bad, they did a bad job at that. It, it's so weird how scatterbrained this film is yeah. as well. It, it feels like there was like a thousand different people working on this, writing things and stuff like that. Like Halle Berry with the, I'd like to thank my 20 writers for yeah. Catwoman. I want to thank the writers, all 20 of them. Yeah. It's, it feels like that, but no, it's one person Yeah, with an extreme amount of ADD. <laughs> yeah, and no ability to write a script. <laughs> I, sorry, <laughs> like I just, oh. it's rough. Um, but so we open up and there the, the line is like, the, the VO's like, welcome to Hollywood. And when it says that, we get a shot of, a, like, the Hollywood sign, and then a woman, like, the, the briefest, shakiest, most awkward close-up shot of a woman, like, getting out of a car in Hollywood. Welcome to Hollywood, California. Land of the dream. The, the, the voiceover says, with stars overhead, and we get a incredibly low res terrible like hubble space telescope yeah, yeah, shot like of the stars grainy as shit yeah and then to stars underneath or under feet and then we get like literal vacation footage of, of the, the hollywood walk of, walk of fame. fame yeah the hands and feet prints stars in the sky and stars under your feet and people are making movies everywhere and again more vacation footage of just like some production trailers on a street somewhere everywhere you go people are making movies it's so on the terrible yeah. and on the nose. It's like every line just has a corresponding image of just the worst quality video you've ever seen in your life. I'm one of the many struggling filmmakers in this town trying to find a way into the business. And then it goes on to explaining that uh, that they like this person likes going to movies, but even in LA, you know, the movie capital of the world, people still have bad theater etiquette. <laughs> but even in Hollywood, the city of movies People are clueless about proper theater etiquette. Like talking and yawning and sleeping and snoring. Phones out. Like they're at home in their living rooms. I don't want to go to dinner on Friday. I want to go Saturday or Sunday. Friday's a salsa night. I don't like salsa. And then there's the yawners. <laughs> and the sleepers. Uh, and, and the woman who reads under her blanket. blanket. And what, like, what is that? That's what? not a no, real person. That, no. <laughs> the guy that chews ice. And the woman who reads under her blanket. And now I think that may be an attempt at a joke, but it's not funny. Well, theaters have gotten <laughs> interesting in the past 10 years, especially with the, uh, like, all the reclining seats and stuff mm -hmm. now. Like, theaters are so different than what they were 10 years ago. 
This is true. Yeah. And they, well, they shot this in like a tiny theater. Like yeah. the theater they're filming this in is like a is like a hundred seats tops. It's I'm, like a, I'm sure. Considering the films being shown, I'm sure this is the same theater that Paul Rubin got caught in. in the arms of the angel. <laughs> it does seem like it. Yeah, the movie's there. We'll get to that in just a second. Because that was actually my next note. Is are these people are just watching like smut? They're just watching like porn? Like mm. what is happening? Let me feed you, my darling. I want a different kind of fruit. I was like, is that a still a thing that happens in LA? Are there just like movie theaters playing porn? Maybe, because they're literally just watching softcore porn in a public theater. Like yep. that is all that's happening. It is these women who are, I think, uh, I think in the credits they're credited as lesbian vampires. What? What? Yeah, what? and they're just like kissing each other and then there's blood and they're and like licking boobs. bloody boobs <laughs> and that's the movie apparently <sighs> and this guy we were introduced to our main character uh harris yes i think is his name i'm a filmmaker myself i just started a, a project i'm harris I live in 202. Um. Uh, this guy has glasses, and there's somebody sits down in front of him, like, blocking his view, and he, like, imagines stabbing them in the head, I think, <laughs> yes. is what happens. Look, I haven't always had those visions in my head, <laughs> but when I do, I keep the demons at bay. <laughs> Then him and his, and we don't know who this is yet. It's, I was it's, like, it's an older woman. Yes, I thought it was his girlfriend at first, but it's not. It is his mom. Mom, who he's bringing to, hey, let's go watch, uh, let's go watch this softcore Let's go porn. watch softcore porn together. Yeah, it's so weird. And I love, she's like, I, I had enough, and they just leave. I guess she wasn't into the softcore porn. But did you notice what she's wearing in this first scene? They mm. we, she well, they walk out of the theater and she's wearing like an old timey like a, like a Halloween vampire costume. And I don't know if that's an intentional reference for the big reveal later. But I was like, why is she dressed like that? It's insane. The rest of the movie, she wears pretty normal clothes mm -hmm. for the most part. This opening scene, she has like it's like a black dress with like a little red like it looks like a, a, a like a vampire costume from the Halloween store. It's so weird. Uh, and again, maybe that's intentional with the with the big reveal at the end of the film. Fuck you, movie. Fuck you. <laughs> But uh, so they leave uh, and then um, as they're af after they leave, we then watch the guy who sat in front of him drives home and parks in his garage. And then somebody shows up with, with a an fucking axe, axe and decapitates and him, cuts his head off. And we get a great uh, the sound effect. Uh, the, it's like the classic, like, oh, like it's, it's not the Wilhelm scream, but it's like one of the heads other. pretty good. It could be worse. It could be worse. That being said, the what is terrible is that after the prop head falls on the ground, it sits there like with its mouth open. They do a digital push into the open mouth, but it's so clearly a still frame and the, <laughs> the pixelation and the resolution just goes to absolute shit as they zoom in on the... Br and Brian, so Brian, bad. continuous resasterization. Resasterization. Rasterization? Yeah. What is resasterization? With rasterization. Okay. Look, I'm not very good when it comes to After Effects. <laughs> I'm not either. I don't do that shit. Ra yeah. I, I just know you'd use that and it makes it look pretty. Oh, okay. Sure. I'll, I'll have to okay. remember that for the future. I don't know things. <laughs> Whoa, you okay? So uh, then we're, we're introduced to the love interest, Heather, who we hit the meet cute 
where Harris bumps into I think her name's Heather. Yes. Uh, he bumps into Heather on the front in front of his like apartment or whatever, and then he like drops his script or something. I don't remember. Or like uh, she drops it. They drop something. And groceries, I think. It oh, is. it is groceries. You're right. It's like a classic thing. Um, and the ADR. This whole movie it, is this ADR. Whole movie is ADR. But it's, it's so, so bad. bad. It's. Hey, look at this. Rebel without a crew. I read that book. Yeah. You must be a, an actress. It doesn't, and again, maybe they're like, thought it would be funny if the ADR was as bad as possible, but I don't think that's what they're doing. I think they just don't the know how to do ADR. The only film who's ever done ADR funny properly is one of the worst comedies I've ever seen, but it's great. Kung Pao, Enter the Fist. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the, yeah, famous, I mean, because that, that's the whole, that's the whole joke, right? Like, yeah, it's, yeah, is that a shitty ADR? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, this one, I don't think it's the joke. I think they just did bad job doing ADR, but I could be wrong. Who knows? Um, but they're both into like terrible movies. They find out she's like, "Oh, I love whatever movie you said." Treasure of the Four Crowns or something Some like that. Some shit. Rockin'. I wore out my VHS copy of Treasure of the Four Crowns. That's awesome. You know, I work at a video store. And they're like, "Oh, we should watch a movie sometime." Blah. Then we cut, and Harris is now jogging, getting his jog on and fucking... I don't think he's in what you call it, the whatever, the main park. What's the park? The one with the planetarium, or the... Gr Griffith's Observatory? Yeah, what park is that in? I have no clue. It's in some famous Hyde park. Hyde Park? No, doesn't matter. Okay. Anyways... <laughs> They're not in that. I don't think he's in that park, but he's in some park and he's jogging. Is he, and is he getting shot at like uh, Stephen Baldwin? <laughs> he's not. He's not. Uh, so then we cut back to Charlie just jogging through another random L.A. park, getting sniped at by people. <laughs> he's just like, oh, God. Oh, fuck my knees. Oh. But he is jogging in, in full sweatpants, and then his mom shows up. And this was so confusing, because, again, I still was like, who don't know who this is. But we, this is the scene where we find out it's his mom. But when she shows up, I swear she pinches his butt and says, what's up, buttercup? It's so weird. Hey. Hello, buttercup. Fuck, Mom, you know I hate it when you creep up on me like that. It's very strange. And again, so I think weird. that might be intentional. I think they're going for a weird, like, psychosexual thing because, of, like, our main character's, like, demented. I don't know. Or his his, his uh, warped childhood. Yeah, I think maybe they're going for something like that, but uh, I don't know. Anyways, also, he sees some random guy in camo, like, stalking him, which is never will come back again. Is not a real person. Or maybe that's Seeger. It could be. It could be, because there's a big reveal later. I don't know. Who cares? You ever think about banging Ingrid? She's into your ass, man. Uh, my, my, one though. of my favorite parts is he he uh, sits down on this like stone bench or whatever uh, with his mom, and in the background, it's the most L.A. thing possible in a park. People doing Tai Chi. <laughs> yes. Yeah, of course. It's fantastic. Um, and then I, he's explaining to his mom that he met a, um, he met a girl and that she's not like these other stuck up LA types. She seems really cool. <laughs> I was like, I fucking hate this guy already. Is she loose? Last thing you need is a baby, Harris. She's a filmmaker too, mom. She's not like one of these stuck up LA types. She seems really cool. Then we get a flashback to his dad. I'm sweating to death, Kyle. <laughs> I am. It is absurd. Yes. Yeah. Oh, God. And then we get a flashback to his mom, like, or his dad, like, abusing his mom mm -hmm. as a child. Uh, and he's having, like, a nightmare about it. And then he wakes up and he, like, wet the bed. And then what? I think he goes to work in, in his, his, his pants. Yes. And you smell like yesterday's diarrhea and your pants look disgusting. I got a pair of khakis in the back you can wear the rest of the day. What? Now, I haven't done that myself, but... <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand, because he shows up late to work, and his boss is like, you smell like a urinal. What are you doing? Here, I have some pants in the back you can Does put on. Does he have on. two jobs? I'm confused. No, he just works at this movie store. What's his other job? Well, like, it, there's like... I guess so they also do, like, posters and stuff, right? 
Yeah, something. whatever this store. This store sells this, like movies and yeah. movie posters, and like they're like a weird like memorabilia movie store. type yeah. thing. Yeah, okay. I think I think it's his only job. I, I don't know. I mean, he's also a budding screenwriter, but that's that. isn't everybody. <laughs> yeah, literally in this film. That's the, and that's the joke. Like they're like that is actually one of the only other funny lines in the movie. Is that later on there's this moment where somebody knocks on somebody's door. And the person is like, "Yeah, I'm a, I, I'm a filmmaker." And isn't guy, everybody? Yeah, he's like, "Isn't everybody?" And just walks away. <laughs> and I was like, "All right, that's kind of funny." But I'm your new neighbor, man. I'm Max, filmmaker. Nice to meet you. Oh, who fucking is it? What the fuck? And then he has another conversation with Heather, like the next day. I think it. I can't remember where they are, but it's the most insane conversation. The ADR, they like talk over each it the adr isn't lined up properly it like overlaps over each other it's so bad so you like svankmeyer not particularly i'm not a big fan i like i'm a, I'm a fan of little otik yeah god those crazy checks are pretty messed up hey, hey, hey i'm check well part check sorry hey hey i'll uh <laughs> it's this movie i hate it i'll have to make it up to you and Take you to the movies sometime. Oh, they're playing Blowout at the New Bev tonight. You want to go? I got to wake up early tomorrow. I got a big day working on a new TV show. I really hated this movie, Kyle. I was really upset that I made us watch. <laughs> I was like, I want... I, oh, I got about halfway through. I was like, maybe we should find a different movie. <laughs> too late now. It's too late. We're in. We're already in. I can't believe the money I'm going to be making. University of Spoiled Children. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I almost got fired today. Um, then he goes to the movies again with his mom, and this it's... time there's a crying baby. Yes. Can you believe that? Oh, Jesus. This is fucked up. Fucking insane, Kyle. He walks, so there's a crying baby, and then that woman leaves, and she's walking out on the street. And I thought, because you see her walking, and you just see this big... The fakest pregnant belly it's you've so ever over, seen in yeah, your it's life. so bad. And I was like, wait, was the baby crying through her yep. stomach? Yep. <laughs> no, it was not. She's pushing a stroller, Kyle. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what I thought. My brain exploded at like. Yes. The, oh, oh, the next thing, yeah. But she's the pushing. lighting's also fucking terrible. Yes, in this it's stuff awful. Too. Is the whole uh, the whole movie? There's never any lights. They just shoot with whatever is available on every scene. Yeah. Like entire film, like pretty much. Um, but no, she is pushing a stroller okay. with a fake baby in it as well that is like wrapped up in blankets that you can't see. And she goes to light up a cigarette. Like, see, she's a bad because she's pregnant and she's smoking. Um, but then she just she walks out and uh, uh, and the guy uh, our main character was complaining about the crying baby while they were in the movie theater and I think his mom said like somebody should do something about that or whatever oh I will yeah and then so we cut outside and then a mysterious person shows up and just murders the, the mom shit. and cuts the that baby baby up. out what the <laughs> It's fucking nuts. And the thing that the baby looks so terrible. You know what it looks like, Kyle? You know those fake aliens they found in Mexico? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it looks like one of those. It's so fucking It's so bad. <laughs> it's and so like the, bad. And the, all the umbilical cord type stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's clearly just like wet paper mache yeah. and like red it's food coloring. It's so bad, dude. It looks terrible. It's terrible. Um, and it's just, yeah, we get this whole big long sequence of him like stabbing her and then like strangling her with the umbilical and it's just, it's all fucking awful. It's so, so bad. And again, this is where the movie's like, this is, you could tell the like trauma influence here. It's like, mm -hmm. let's be as shocking as possible. It's, aren't you shocked? But like, trauma's no. goofy. Yeah. And like, this, this one's not, yeah. There's not it, a lot of schlock here. It's just. No, it's just, it's just like, it's just. It's just being like a shocking for shocking sake yeah. with terrible execution. You know, and th that is the issue with a lot of the like Sharknado and stuff. That it's the exact same thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're not, none of those go quite to this level because no, that's the, no. Yeah. If they didn't have a budget, they would. Yeah. Well, I, I maybe. I, also, they're on network television, so or, or not network like Fair cable. Enough. They're on cable television. I don't think Sci-Fi would have signed off on the the it, slicing it, the baby out of the stomach. True. But. True. <laughs> it lacks that earnest intent that makes some of the good bad films we watch so like yeah beautiful yeah no it, 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 it but it has a little bit of it because i i really do think 
that this movie takes itself seriously and thinks it's being a good movie while also being like, but also it's like sh shocking and ridiculous and, and gory and kind of like a trauma movie, but I, also like it's I telling a the, serious story. Like, I hope the director's not like, well, you know, I just wrote this as like a social commentary of the day. I think I think all this was is the director said, hey, I had th this movie spawned from one thing. It spawned from sitting there watching a movie, somebody like talking on their phone one time and, and the person going, man, I'd love to kill that person talking on their phone right now. What if that was a movie? And then, and if that was the whole premise, that would be one thing. But then the movie goes this whole other different direction where it's about like legal rights for scripts. They told you that your claim as sole author can't stand up to a hill of refried beans. Bullshit. I have earlier drafts registered in my name. This Heather woman, she claims that you and she wrote the script together. And about like the, the the weird, like abusive, traumatic childhood of the main character. I'm gonna beat you, buddy. Fucking leave us alone. No, no, no. And none of that is what I want from a movie about a guy who becomes a serial killer killing annoying movie patrons. That's just not. Those two things don't make sense together. I just want him to go around killing annoying movie patrons. Like that's make that the movie. But they had to do some other stuff, and then I might have to drink more for this movie to make sense. <laughs> hey, best get in. You drive. I've been drinking. Uh, so then the next day, he's at, he's at the movie store talking to his friend Seeger, who we're introduced to mm -hmm. here, who spends this entire scene bragging about oh, having raw dogged his cousin. I fucked my cousin, Teresa. <laughs> what? I did, seriously. I fucking raw dog the shit out of her. Oh my God, you wonder why you don't have a girlfriend. That's with your cousin? My cousin. Uh, First cousin? Third cousin, once removed. Oh, okay. It's not that bad, right? Is she from Canada or something? I met her once when I was like seven. <laughs> and Harris doesn't know what raw dogging is. What exactly is raw dogging? Listen, that's what you got the internet for. Check it, it out. Is it like a position? How do you raw dog? You know, I don't like to talk about it. It kind of dilutes. Uh, just don't worry it's about like it. It's like Fight Club, first rule of raw dogging. Uh, don't talk about raw dogging. And he's like, what's raw dogging? And he's like, you don't know what raw... This, all of this dialogue is the worst. Kyle, this is like... I want. I mean this with, an, with as all the positivity as possible. This is like if... It, 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 this, is, this is like if... So, <laughs> Go for it, Ryan. <laughs> it reminded me a little bit of some of the dialogue in your movie, but Thanks. like, <laughs> Thanks. but all the crime in Gotham is caused by Bruce Wayne himself. And just think about this: Wayne Industries controls transportation, entertainment, medical, food, multiple businesses. Right. Exactly. Wayne produces, manufactures, and distributes everything in Gotham. He's practically monopolized the entire city. You, but terrible. And intentionally, like, be, like intentionally, yeah. like provoke provocative. Well, your your stuff is not it was not intentionally provocative, but it had the banter of like a Kevin Smith movie. Yeah. Like it had like the the something about it reminded me of like a Kevin Smith movie, but like terrible. Seven. That's when I met her, not when I raw dogged. Oh, okay. okay. I raw dogged her when I was twenty-two. <laughs> why do you have to say raw dog? Uh, why do I have to say it? It's not that I say it; I live it. Whereas your stuff reminds me of a Kevin Smith movie, but like mediocre. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I, I love it. <laughs> no, I'm serious. All right, all right. Let's say you have a small business in Gotham, right? You have a wife, kid, a little suburban home. And all of a sudden, your clientele drops because they find better prices at Wayne's Market. Is there a point to all this? There is. Just bear with me. All right. So Wayne's a good businessman, right? He bleeds you out a little bit, let your business suffer, just so he can lowball you with an offer. But you, you're desperate. You take the money. That doesn't last long. What do you do then? You get a job. Where? The only place hiring are by Wayne. Do you think he's really willing to put his competition on payroll already? You know, and you were uh, you were self-employed. Don't even look towards unemployment. Welfare won't keep a family fed. What do you do then? Banditry, fraud, anything to keep you from losing your home. This sick bastard financially bitch slaps you just so you can kick your ass in a, a pair of tights. I don't know. Oh wait, Kyle, I just remembered something. Hold on. Oh no. Oh no. I'm about to be incredibly shocked. No, it'll take a minute. So you're not about to be in. Oh, okay. 
I'll surprise everybody in a second with this thing. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> We're definitely not going to die. It's fine. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, uh, some guy's getting head in a car from some old lady. She's got a mouthful, bud. Shut up. The word on the street about that perb is that it, 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 he's a native Angelino. Who knows about a murder that happened. This scene does not matter, is not relevant in any way. It is only in the movie because isn't it funny that this old lady is giving head to this guy. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> Small hands. So I assumed this whole time, and I will say this, the movie got me here. I assumed what was going to end up being the case was that the mom was murdering everybody. We were no. going to get like a psycho, or not psycho, well, but like a, a Jason the thing or is fr we, hot Friday the 13th. We, it was set up to be psycho after the reveal, but then it went another reveal. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. It's weird. Uh, but yeah, so it ends up being, wait, there's another reveal? The, the reveal being the, the two people conspiring. Because yes. it was set up, the, the way it was set up is it made it look like Harris, Harrison yeah. or? Har Harrison? Uh, Harris, yeah. It made it look like he is just a fucking nut job. Yeah. But, and that's what I thought. Well, so no, initially I thought they were setting up that his mom is killing everybody, mm -hmm. but he thinks he's doing it because he had this abusive traumatic childhood or whatever. But actually it's the mom okay, doing it. Okay. Like 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 Friday the 13th or whatever. Oh, I knew the mom. Mm -hmm. That got me. That reveal got me. I don't, I'm going to cut this out because I want to get to that reveal later. But that got me, Kyle. I'm just going to say that that got me. Anyway, okay. I, was, when I say got me, I was like, it made me go, oh, fuck you. But it's... <laughs> I did not see it coming. I will say that much. I can't even come once with you guys talking. Then we're back in the theater again later, and some assholes just start picking on Harris. Like, they just go behind him, yeah. like, kicking what his the... chair or whatever. Look at this dickhole. Hey, can you stop kicking my mom's seat, please? How about I stick my fist in your ass, four eyes? And then they're, like, following him around the theater to be an asshole. And then Harris either... Piss. Both of these are insane. He pisses into a fucking cup? Yes, is that what? Okay, he pisses into a cup and throws it on them. What did you say, you prick? Drink my piss! Ah! It's in my fucking mouth! It's fucking piss! And the guy's like, ah, it's in my fucking mouth! It's fucking piss! Oh, you fat fuck! Uh, and then they get run over. They go, they like yes! leave. They also Dude. don't do anything after he throws piss on them. No. You would think they would like beat his ass. They don't do anything. They're just like, oh, okay, fine, I guess. And then later they're standing in the in the parking lot, or like in a in the alleyway, and, and conspiring about how they're gonna murder this kid. And then they just get run over by a car. <laughs> what the, f the, the 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 dummies is pretty good. Then we're introduced to our detectives, who I can't remember their names, but it doesn't uh, matter. Schmidt and Schoenberg. Yeah. Wow. Kyle, what the fuck? <laughs> Why do you remember that? I, I don't hate know. That. I hate that for you, that you remember that. <laughs> uh, um, but Schmidt's the one who wants to... Is, is the he the one who wants to be an actor? No, he's the horny one. Sch Schoenberg's oh, the other actor one. one. Okay. Uh, and my favorite thing is that they're in this scene, they're like supposed to be... I guess they're supposed to be plain clothes cop because they're just wearing t-shirts. Yeah. They're just Which, wearing t-shirts. Badges. I mean, yeah, come anything. On. Anything. They just look like dudes. It looks terrible. But first. Dun dun dun. <coughs> <laughs> I meant to do that at the beginning and I forgot. I'm kidding though. Actually didn't get anywhere near me. <laughs> I'm just going to do this forever. Spooky Halloween. <laughs> Anyways, I bought this like four years ago to use on the show, and I've <laughs> forgotten about it every, every year. Every single time. Until this year, I remembered uh, the fog machine. That we, it puts out too much. I, it's like, too, yeah. And then it come down, linger, fall, fall, fall. It's fine. We're fine. Definitely not going to suffocate. It's fine. <laughs> We're fine, Kyle. We're oh, I didn't push the button. It just, <laughs> it just did that one. D dribbled out. Spoop. Stop it. <laughs> Dude, this thing shorts and just shoots everything out at once. <laughs> it just like runs and runs and runs and we just literally suffocate. Okay. I'm not pushing the button. Stop. There's a reason we didn't use this. <laughs> it's fine. It looks good. It looks... It adds a lot of uh, a lot of, a lot of smoky ambience, ambience. Well, uh, ambiance to the background. 
Uh, that's actually the main thing I use this for is for when I'm shooting at work and stuff. I like use it for as a hazer, even though it's not an actual hazer. Uh, it works okay. Anyways, um, so Harrison is talking to Heather in the next scene. He's spilling his heart out about how he and his mom used to go to the movies to escape their abusive yeah. father yes, or that's... whatever. My dad was a drunk, and my mom and I would find our solace in the local movie house. It was our home, away from home. That's what I got from there, the whole scene. Yeah, and, then, and then in this scene, I love... I think it's the same scene. Heather then starts talking about how, oh, I can take you to the movies now because I'm making bank. And, you know, I'm making bank now, so I figured why not be neighborly and see if you're up for going to the movies? Because she got a job as, I thought, an actor or a PA or something on some TV show. I got a big day working on a new TV show. How did you get that gig? Um, my dad's friend. And she says she walked on set and talked her way onto the writing staff. And now she's writing on this TV show. It's great. They've already promoted me. Wow. I know. I, I've basically talked my way into the writing staff. It's insane. And according to her, that means she's making bank, which I, I don't no. think that's actually true at all. But as like the most junior member of a writing staff that you apparently just talked her way onto. But sure. Anyway, so then they go to a movie. And oh, have you guys heard of Days of Our Lives? Yeah, I'm one of the writers for that. <laughs> I make 48 cents a day. <laughs> like, there's no way the writing step for day, unless you're like the senior writer, yeah. But then they go to the movies, and she buys Swedish fish, and he has, I don't understand what this the line. Fuck is, yeah, he this... says, hey, Swedish fish, you know, a girl who likes Swedish fish is a girl who can't be trusted. <clears throat> hey, Swedish fish. You know, a girl like Swedish Fish is a girl that can't be trusted. Way to tell that to a woman you're bringing out on yeah, a first like, date. Yeah, what are you doing, dude? You're an idiot. Oh, look at the, the ambiance here. It's just, oh, my it's, God. It's so hazy. It's so hazy. It's good. It's, <coughs> it's getting a little thick. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> I'm starting to get lost in the sauce here. I can't see myself in the I drink so much I got lung cancer. Wait a second. Then, <laughs> then uh, they watch this movie. Then they go to the movie store and they talk to Seeger and she's introduced to Seeger here, or at least so we think. And Seeger is like... He's the worst. Su he's, he's also sucking Harris's dick like so hard in this scene. Because you're friends with Hollywood, I'm going to hook you up with a deluxe membership. He's also just an awful, he's like an, a, a, a horrible, like yeah. weirdo. <laughs> like he's, she shows up and, and, and Harris is like, we got a video virgin here. And, and Seeger's like, well, let's de-virginize her. <laughs> Seeger, this is my neighbor, Heather. She's a video virgin to Eddie Brantz. Well, let's de-virginize the girl. Uh, then we get a scene where his mom's being a weirdo about him dating. Like he comes back and opens the door and she's like, where have you been? And I'm like, oh, yeah, she wants to fuck him. Uh, but surprise, she doesn't because she... We'll get to it. Fucking stupid fucking fake twist I love how shit. you guys fucking... Hey, shut up, Kyle. <laughs> uh, then he goes, they go back to the movies, and somebody is texting in the movie theater, and I love Harris just starts screaming at her. Yes, very loudly. He's like, fucking stop texting. And he literally yells, I'm going to fucking kill you. Oh, dude, that's it, mother. We're going. We're going. That dumb fucking cunt has her phone out again. I'm gonna fucking kill you. And I, my favorite detail is just she's just like, da, 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 da. like he's screaming that he's gonna kill her, and she's yes. like, da, 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 just ignoring him. And I'm like, what a queen. Look at oh, you. Oh, good. It's fantastic. And I'm gonna fucking kill you. So then she goes up to some other random theater. theater? Like, what the yeah. fuck is she? She walks out of with the like theater. With, like, a just... grand balcony and everything. It's... I don't know. She ends up in some other theater with, like, a giant balcony. I, <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be visible by the time this episode ends. It's a genius idea, Brian. <laughs> I just won't push the button anymore. It's fine. Well, I don't think it's going to stop it. It's still putting stuff out. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> you can see me, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I might need to crack a door. Hold on. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> see, Brian's trying to kill me. And then we see the killer walk up behind her in the balcony, and it's like, that's just Harris, right? Yeah. Like, it's definitely just Harris. 
Now, I think we will ultimately be meant to f think and realize that this is actually Seeger. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Was he doing this? Yeah, he was. Okay. But it looks similar enough, that I guess. But I was like, oh, it's just going to be Harris because that's boring. But I, they, he does shove her phone down her throat. Yes. <laughs> It's kind of funny, but it's also terribly shot. You don't see anything. Like, you just see him, like, everything's, like, bad, shaky close-ups. And, like, there's an okay moment where you see, like, the light coming through, like, her throat. But it's, like, so, it's all edited so poorly and shot, framed so terribly that it's you can't tell what's happening half the time. And even the good ideas are just lost in, like poor execution and it's just it's so fucking bad and, okay so so you have she is now dead yes what a waste man i would have cut off my left nut to bang a girl like this in high school we have we have police investigating her death yeah i think one of them was like damn i used to bang a chick like her back in college yeah yeah shit i used to bang girls like this all the time back in high school <laughs> i wouldn't cut off my nuts maybe a pinky but never the nuts and I love that when they're walking away from the scene, they like cover her body. It's just the two of them, by the way. There's no yeah. other like <laughs> yeah. police or anything. They cover her body again and walk away, and the wind blows, blows the off. cover, it's and they so just good. leave it and walk away. Oh, and again, God. if that were intentional, now they may have intentionally used that take because they thought it was funny, but the wind blowing that up was clearly not intentional. That was just a moment that happened. But uh, maybe, I don't want to give them the benefit of the doubt. I don't think they did intentionally. I think it was just the only take they had, and the wind blew it up, and they're like, fuck it, we're just using it. Come on, let's go talk to the girl she was on the phone with last night. The cops go and they're interviewing some lady who had a burn. What is this? This is irrelevant to everything. They interviewed the lady who was friend. She was on the she phone. Was, with yeah, her. she was friends with the phone woman. Yeah. And but she has like horrific burns. Just the worst burn makeup. Yeah, it, it looks really like bad. if if you asked me to do a burn makeup with zero experience, I, that's probably what it would look uh, like. She starts screaming and they, obviously they couldn't get this woman into ADR, so this is all Yes, it's all on camera or like on the on camera mic and it peaks blows out. So hard, dude. <gasps> I just She just starts screaming. I, it and my, so bad. I don't even know what she said. Friend, one of the detectives is like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> shut the fuck up. And then it just cuts and the scene just ends. They're like, wait, what is happening? Shut the fuck up. Oh, but I love, I love, she starts screaming. She peeks it so bad, I could not tell what she said. Do you know what she said in that moment? No. I just remember screaming! That's what I'm saying, where it's like, even the stuff that's bad, and like, you would think like, okay, maybe this is intentionally bad. I, it's not funny bad. Just it's just bad. I don't know where this movie's going. <laughs> it's, dude, it's terrible. It's going into the fucking dumpster because that's where I would put it if I owned it as a physical copy, but I don't, and I'm glad. <laughs> So many of my notes end with Kyle. This is just terrible. I hate this. <laughs> uh, then we flash back to Harris's dad sexually assaulting his mom, and then his mom mm -hmm. kills his dad. It's just crazy. <laughs> or maybe that's not what happened. Maybe when uh, he uh, broke a vase over his head. Well, yeah, Harris hits him, and yeah. then and then his mom comes up and kills. Like she like you're right unreliable narrative we don't know but we don't know maybe what actually happened was the reverse of that with with what the reveal we get at the end and like maybe he like ran away from his dad I don't know anyways um, then it's the next day and Harris I guess is sick none of this has never been set yeah, up why is he he's like the? in bed like a little baby he's like Ooh, I'm so, I don't yeah. feel good that's like the sweetest thing anyone's ever done for me <laughs> here. And then his Heather shows up and brings him soup. And I was like, what is happening? And then he's like, oh, I got you passes to Cinecon. None of this. I got us passes to Cinecon. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're an angel. Not every scene is just contextualist nonsense. Like, nothing makes sense. 
nothing follows from scene to scene. I think we're again we're supposed to be getting like an unreliable narrator kind of thing mm. because the main character is like crazy. I guess I, maybe I don't know. But it's just awful. Then we get a news coverage of one of the murders, oh, and oh, uh, I love it. I do love. Look, all other things aside, this movie, I do love a good terrible news scene in a movie. It's, it's no, one of my no favorite Lenny bad G. movie things. <laughs> Lenny G reporting for News News today. We have gotten into the crime scene of a possible homicide. As you have heard, the owner, Carl Johnson, who owns this auto repair shop, has been murdered. It's no Lenny G, but my favorite detail in this one, which I don't think we've seen before in a bad movie or bad movie news scene before, is the reporter is talking and she's interviewing some woman who's like a waitress or something yeah. about like how how safe she feels. Well, the other women are just praise me, so we're all kind of afraid, you know. And and bartenders, we all dress pretty skimpy, so you know we always yeah. attract attention. It's like what the fuck? What, what are you talking about? What is about happening? Here? Yeah. I'm a bartender at the Silver Spur, and I walk home that way every night. And you know our outfits, as you can see. But my favorite detail of this is that that woman says that, and then it cuts back to a reverse shot of the reporter going, interesting, tell me more about that. So it's just crazy that there's some deranged pervert out there lurking in the darkness. What would you do if you were actually confronted by the killer? Do you say that? I'm superstitious. And then it cuts back to her going, yeah, well, I just think that if we're going to have people that, like, and, and that's like, that is not how news is shot. That is, they don't that do, like, a great. shot, reverse shot of fucking news, like a reporter interviewing somebody. You would do it in just a two, or maybe you would, like, pan back and forth, like, yeah. if, you're, if you're, but there's, like, it's literally, like, they're interviewing, it's so funny. It's so fucking funny. Because you might do a shot, reverse shot like that if you were doing a sit-down interview. Yeah. But this is like on the street, Wait, like it's the, so good. The, some of the sit down interview stuff, it, it's just a, a typical news thing where like the reporter will ask a question and then the person will start giving an answer. And then during it, we'll just cut to the reporter going. Mm, 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 and then mm, <laughs> everybody mm, fucking does it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I've edited enough news packages, Kyle. I know <laughs> we both have. We've all been there. We've all been there as fucking TV news chumps. <laughs> Oh God! Um, so the Harris at this point just thinks he kills. He's killing people with like he goes into a fugue state and kills people, which yeah. I think is not happening. But if that's not happening, what is happening to him then? Is he being poisoned? Oh, did she poison him with the soup? Maybe this movie's brilliant. Kyle. It's a Swedish Maybe fish. It's, it's oh the Swedish. Well, he didn't eat that. He didn't eat the Swedish fish. Well, she can't be trusted. You don't that's know that. That's true. He, he did. We did plant that seed with the Swedish fish line that she can't be trusted. <laughs> no, I refuse to give this movie that credit. I, I refuse, Kyle. I wanted her to fucking die. I'm glad she's dead. He's riding the subway. Is I there, guess to go to work. I think. Is there a subway in uh, LA? But there's like a zombie on it. Oh what yeah. The fuck is what the fuck is oh. this? This is a woman who has like a, a, a zombie this mouth. This is just this guy going fucking cuckoo. I guess. Yeah, he's, she's like, rah, and the zombie. And then it's just, she says somebody's coming for Harris or something. And then the scene just ends. And I'm like, what the fuck? It's, <laughs> I fucking hated this movie. You asshole. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you look like my ex-wife's pussy. Is that bad? Again, I, 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 there's elements of it I can see like what they were going for, but it's all executed so fucking terribly. It's so bad. Also, the boss is just harassing the shit out of Harris. Yeah. He's being like, you're, hey, you're a loser at this point in your life. You're yeah. fucking up and all that. Hey, I was just messing with you, but fuck you. Now you're fired. You're what, fired, what, what are you doing, dude? What, like, what, what is, is happening? <laughs> it's so weird. No wonder you spend night after night of your pathetic, measly life in a movie theater, living other people's dreams, other people's lofty adventures. You are a loser. Uh, then uh, we cut to the two detectives. They go to visit some like movie producers. Yes. What the fuck is this? It's so over the top. What is this? Who the, is didn't he? Didn't you know that all, what is his relevance? all movie producers have a bunch of scantily clad women around? Yeah, he's just a guy in a fucking robe with the scantily clad women everywhere. And I don't even know what his relevance to the plot is. Like, why are the detectives talking to him? I have no clue. 
So I assume that you're here to give me some good news. And you're gonna tell me that you caught the boy that killed my son. We're working on it. So they had this whole thing where the police are talking to him, and it's just all, it's again, it's all terrible. And the lighting in this scene, which the light, they actually have a light in this scene, but it's like the one scene they shouldn't have had a fucking this is light. Outdoors they're during outdoors. The day. They don't need it necessarily. They're under like an overhang. Just get some reflectors. But they're, but they're like clearly blasting a, day, a, a fucking tungsten light. At, it looks like tungsten to me. At, at the detectives at the table, and it's clashing with all of the rest of the light in the scene, and it's just. It looks so fucking bad. It's like the one scene where they... Oh. It's just, all right, color temperature battle. <laughs> we're outdoors. We're, we have, we're competing against the, the sun, Brian. Let's shoot a 30... Like a, what was it? Yeah, 32. Was it like a 32... Yeah. yeah. Th let's shoot a 3200 uh, Calvin bulb. I think it's 32. 36? It's so... I don't know. I don't... I'm not a cinematographer. I just... <laughs> I tell other people how to do <laughs> yeah. that shit. I don't, I, make, make it look good. Make it look good. I just direct. I don't fucking, I don't know. I am the smartest man alive. Anyway, so then uh, the they talk to this guy. He's like, hey, you want a margarita? But it's actually the name of the girl is yeah. margarita. Fucking fuck you. This is so stupid. Yep. You see, margarita here, she doesn't come in a bottle. Or maybe she does. We'll never know. But she is one tall. Drink of water. One of the detectives tells the producer that he used to jerk off to his movies, and he's like, thanks. I must have pleasured myself a thousand times as a kid watching that movie. Yeah, he's got calluses on his hands. You and everybody else that saw it. It's all so fucking awful. My face the whole time watching this movie was just... <laughs> My face the whole time watching this movie was, jeez. Are we done? <laughs> Are we done? It's only an hour and ten minutes long, and it feels like an eternity, dude. Yes. It's it's such a short fucking movie. Too. That is the worst quality of filmmaking. It that is our that's usually our big difference between good, bad, and bad, bad is that if your film is an hour and a half long and it feels like it's three hours long, you failed somewhere. You fucking suck. You suck. If your film's an hour and a half long and it feels like a twenty minute thrill ride and it's fun, holy shit, you just made a great film. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Good commentary, Brian. Yep. Uh, then he, uh, the producer tells a story about how this woman he used to know would suck the cream out of a Twinkie and spit it on her vagina, and that she never missed. And that's the end of the story. She'd take a Twinkie, and these things last for thousands of years. She'd break it in half. She'd suck the white cream out of it. Spit it on a twat. Never missed. I do not understand what the fuck that's even supposed to mean. Like, what is that supposed to tell us? Like, what is that? What does that story mean, Kyle? She spit the cream from a, a Twinkie on her vagina. Like, what? Botulism. I, <clears throat> botulism. It's not botulism. Maybe a yeast infection, maybe. <laughs> probably, but like, yeah. I just don't understand. Like, what even that? Like, that's not even. Like, you're doing. Maybe that's the point. Maybe the point is that, like, in these movies. Or in, in a movie like this where you would go see a, a producer, the producer would tell some weird, like, perverted story about, yeah. like, the exploits in the old days, and sometimes they don't even really make sense, and so it doesn't matter. And so they're satirizing that by having him tell a completely ridiculous story about this. But that doesn't even make sense because it doesn't make sense. Anyways. She called me her pinky twinkie. But enough about Sylvia. Uh, and then they go to a strip club called Jumbo's Clown Room. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, just truly the worst song that we maybe we've ever had in one of these yeah. movies plays. I was also getting some uh, meltdown vibes. Yeah. With the strip scene. Yes, the strip, the strip club, club scene. Definitely some meltdown vibes. Because there's nothing more appealing in these movies than a strip club lit during the day. <laughs> yes. Yes. Just a, a nice, bright strip club. Uh, but the music that is playing is, uh, it's like if somebody said, what if we took P.O.D. and made it, like, worse? <laughs> <laughs> well, as my eyes open, I am on my way out of this place. 
I'm looking forward to the next generation of youth. Youthful taste. That's what it sounds like. It's fucking brutal, oh, dude. Oh, God. Uh, and then they talked to some stripper who was apparently being paid to pretend to be some dead guy's boyfriend because the dead guy was gay and she was like his beard, I guess, is the idea. I mean, I was hired to be Ray's girlfriend by Red. So Raymond, he couldn't get a girlfriend on his own? No, because Ray was gay. Then Harris runs like He's apparently directing a movie or something because he starts running like We've met this actress a couple times. I think her name's Ingrid or something like that. Mm. Uh, and he's now running lines with her. And then she just takes her shirt off and starts making out with him. And then he strangles her yes, with a belt. What the fuck? They're, they're great. And then she leaves and runs away. And I, I'm, I will say, this is the, the exact moment that Katie happened to watch, walk in. Yes! The, <laughs> the exact moment is this guy oh, strangling God. this topless girl with his the, belt. The, the, sec like, the second they were like great, making it out of there, and then great. we got a, we had a close-up of him, and then it flashed to Heather for a second. Fuck <laughs> oh. <sighs> me, and then we went back. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, this guy's crazy, and he's fucking choking her out." And then, yeah, oh, with a belt. Yeah, oh boy. Oh god. Yeah, with his with his dumb little double. He's got a double, which this asshole would. The double buckle. Yeah. Those belts that have two prongs. I oh, don't. No, that's a. I don't like those belts. That's a. That's my. I'm making my <laughs> if, stand, if, if Kyle. You, if you have one of those, I'm a two pronged belt hater. <laughs> and if you wear one, you're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Fucking psycho. I don't care actually at all. Um, uh, just don't strangle people with them uh, unless they ask for it. And then, so the. You're uh, not supposed to apply a tourniquet to the neck. <laughs> yeah, no, not generally. Um, then we cut, and there's some old. I think it's the guy that was in the movie. So there's a guy in a movie theater eating. Yeah. And, and Harris gets mad at him. And this then he, guy, he's got a fucking trash bag full of food. Yeah, and then he goes into the toilet and yeah, is taking fun, a shit. Is. You can see the whole grundle, just everything. <laughs> I, it's too late. I've seen everything. <laughs> yes. And he's just eating pizza on the toilet, taking a shit. And again, it's just the movie intentionally trying to like, oh, look how outrageous as it is. It's shit. <laughs> then he has a nightmare of his dad. Oh, he, stra he st what does he do to this guy? So he gets that guy in the, and he like, he like puts a bag over his head. Yeah. And then like. Is that Coca-Cola? I have no clue. I thought it was blood at first coming out of his mouth, but it's like brown. And But where is it coming from? I don't know. I had I, I already know. have I don't eyes. fucking know. I think it's Why to, was it brown, Brian? I think it's supposed to be Coca-Cola. Because okay. the guy was eating, and so he's killing him with, like, the soda like or something. Because yeah. I think he was mad he was eating. But I don't know. So he has a plastic bag over his head, and there's liquid coming up from the... How is the liquid? What is happening? I don't understand the, the the fucking mechanics of what is transpiring in this scene because he's like, it's so weird, dude. I don't even. You're no help, Kyle. No, I'm I not. Even understand what was happening in this movie. I, I don't get it. Do you think my idea is gonna be any better? Yeah, the dude is like literally choking. On, it's like not even suffocating on his own like CO2. He's drowning in his own fluid or whatever. Fuck that. It's Coca Cola. It's iodine, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Just I don't know. A bottle of iodine. It's the, only, it's the only like dark liquid I could think of. <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. Uh, then he has a nightmare. The next day, he has a nightmare of his dad stabbing him and cutting like a Necronomicon version of his screenplay out of his stomach. His book of vile darkness. <laughs> well, it is because it, it looks kind of like it has like a, it's like a flesh like book cover or whatever, but it says Static Dreams on it, which is we know is the name of his screenplay yeah. that he was working on. I've put my soul into the script. I've been saving up for five years to make this. Static Dreams. And that spoilers, and this is a setup that we had to, or not spoilers, but a, a detail we missed earlier on. I think um, Heather asked him if she could have a copy of his script. And then she like asked, asked him to sign it. Sign it, and you were the inspiration for everything. What should I put? Um, 
Make it out to Heather. Say you were the inspiration for it all. Yes, and he so he does. He signs it and he gives her a copy of the script. We'll get to that in just a second, but that happened earlier, and the, the name of his script is Static Dreams. Then he gets arrested. The cops show up, and they're like, hey, we got to take you down for questioning because we heard you you were yelling you were going to murder the woman who got murdered like four seconds later. Yeah. So, <laughs> so obviously, you know. They arrest him, but then he gets out of that one by just telling one of the detectives that he liked his movie, The Runs, that he was in, and that detective's like, oh, you liked my movie? All right. Ah, he liked my movie. We he can't be too bad. We know you didn't. Yeah. Get on out of here, you scamp. Were you in The Runs? Oh, fuck me. Dude, Yes. You're the first person I've ever met that's seen it. Look at this guy. It's good. I saw it on cable a few times. It's a fun little gem. Really? We find out Heather stole his script. That bitch. She's, and I completely forgot she was, because she like disappeared from the yeah. movie after like 20 minutes. I think the actress just disappeared yeah, for a while. Yeah, she's like, nope, this yeah, is dumb. They were able to get her back for the climax, but she was gone for most of the movie. Um, so she stole her script, and I'm like, but wait, okay, this makes no sense. And it makes so little sense. The movie has to have a whole scene right after this explaining how this all happened. Because he's like, she stole my script. He gets like a magazine that says like, oh, the new hottest thing in Hollywood, Heather. She wrote this script, Static Dreams, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, what? She stole my script. And I'm like, well, okay. But the script you gave her would have had your name on it mm -hmm. still. And all you did was sign Heather. You were my inspiration for this. And then signed his name. Put my soul into the script. Say you were the inspiration for it all. <laughs> then we find out he goes to talk to his agent or something. Or somebody who's saying that she you got you're you're screwed. Basically explains like the whole how he explains the nuts and bolts of writing accreditations in the WGA. Basically, he's like, OK, so here's what happened. She's claiming you co-wrote the script and that she you went down to the like the wherever the guild or whatever and and went in there and like signed away all your rights on it and see your 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 signature here says you signed away all your rights. He's like, I never did that. And I'm like, what? It's a copy of a quit claim form. It states in old English, legalese, that you've been paid for your screenplay and that you have signed off on all rights and privileges to screen credit and story credit. And we don't know what was supposed to have happened there. Did she t use his signature and fake it? Maybe. None of that's ever explained or addressed again, but the idea is that somehow she, she was able to like or, or did he actually go down there, like, in a fugue state and sign up? I don't fucking... I hate this goddamn it's so fucking dumb. movie. What does that mean? Well, translated from old Gaelic, it means that you are truly and royally fucked. Uh, anyways, he's, she stole his script, so he's very mad about that. Uh, lots of Writer's Guild exposition here. It's really brilliant stuff. Then we get our fucking Lloyd Kaufman cameo, which, yep. oh my he's god. He's a landlord, apparently. Hey, Jim. Damn it! What do you want? I'm just getting ready to watch some good porno, and you? What do you want? And then the only f other funny line in the entire film, in my opinion, happens. Uh, he's asking about because I think Heather used to live there. Mm -hmm. He's asking about like, did she leave anything behind or whatever? And he's like, well, she had Chairman Mao plastered all over everything. I don't know if she was jerking off to him or what. But I was like, what the fuck is happening? She had Chairman Mao plastered all over the place. I don't know if she was jerking off to him or what. What a filthy bitch! Uh, then he calls the cops and then he puts, he like bugs himself. Yeah. He like tapes a recorder to his stomach or whatever. And then he shows up to Heather's place and Seager Seager's is there. there. And, they, and then they club him. They club him and tie him up. They club him and tie him up. And for a minute, I thought like she, he kept talking to them like they're both there, but only Seeger was on camera. And I thought they were just going to have like she wasn't actually they couldn't get the actress anymore. And he was just going to keep talking to her off camera the whole time. Oh, you two motherfuckers. You guys met at CineCon, didn't you? No, we met in a cinema chat room online. But no, she's actually still in the movie. She comes walking in and is like, haha, I stole your movie. Fuck you. Uh, and we find out that her and Seeger met on a chat board. Yeah. Or what? something. The age of the internet. And that they then hatched a plan to, because Seeger had read his script. So they hatched a plan to steal Harris's script together. 
And I think Seeger might have been the one killing all the people to frame Harris. So we plotted to take it from you, and it wasn't very hard. We tried to make you think you were going crazy, constantly terrorizing you. We even tried to frame you by killing that pig of a lady. Maybe? I don't fucking know, Kyle. I don't fuck Kyle. I, you know what this fucking reminds me of? A writer who has no idea what to write about, so he starts getting like meta and shit. It's like Lloyd Kaufman and adaptation levels. Or Lloyd Kaufman. I was like, did Lloyd Kaufman? <laughs> no, uh, or but it's like uh, uh, that's Charlie Kaufman. Charlie Kaufman. <laughs> it's like Charlie Kaufman in like adaptation, where he's writing about like the movie is about the film th or the, that he's writing. It's like there's parts of that that feel like it. Sure. That's giving it way too much credit, though. I was say, fuck off. That's not, no, how dare you compare this to a Charlie Coffin script? How fucking dare you? We are going to make a shitload of money. Oh, fuck, fuck you. Off of your pathetic little life. Uh, then his mom comes flying. So they have him tied up and they're like going to kill yeah, him. Yeah, what guess. was this? Then his this mom comes flying in as a ghoul. And this is before I realized, surprise, the big spoiler is that his mom was dead the whole time. This movie's the fucking sixth sense. I'm not afraid anymore. Who the fuck's he talking to? I knew she wasn't there. I. How did you know? This is from the from. I I I had some suspicion because nobody else interacted with her like at all. Hey, can you stop kicking my mom's seat, please? How about I stick my fist in your ass, four eyes? Come on, mom. And then there was a scene where he wakes up sick and she's like, yeah, you, you know, you gotta get up, you gotta do stuff. And she, uh, there's she, uh, Heather's there at the door, knocking on it, bringing the tray of like soup or whatever. And she's like, there's somebody at the door. And then she, she just blips out of existence, like the, the hard cut and she's gone. Harris, Harris, there's someone at the door. Come in. Turns out, yeah, his mom's been dead the whole time, but apparently is a real ghost because she does fly mm -hmm. in and and like uh, beat up the bad guy. I don't even know what happens. We she just like screams and we can't even like nothing happens again. This movie is so poorly directed and, and they didn't get the coverage they needed. It's just random chaotic shots slapped together of like people screaming and stuff happening and you can't tell what's happening because it's all fucking terribly done. Um, but then we just fade out because she I think she murders Seeger and I think just screams at Heather and Heather maybe ends up getting arrested. But then surprise, uh, the cops show up. They're like, hey, we got you, Harris. You're, you're good. Uh, we know what, everything that went down. We arrested Heather. You're going to get your script back. Everything's great. And Everything's working out for you. Everything's working out perfect. He's riding home in the car, back of his car, in the back of the police car with them, too. And he's talking to his mom. And then he, they get out of the car. And the mom and, and the, the police officers go, who is Who's he talking, talking to? to? Oh, and I was like, weirdo. Oh my God. Who the fuck's he talking to? Thanks again, officers. Thank you so much. Just try to stay out of trouble. Yeah, you know, still think a kid's a fucking nut. And then, though, this makes no sense. The fucking ending, Kyle. They go, oh, yeah, who's he talking to? Oh, nobody. And then they hear a sound in the back seat, and they move the mirror down to look in the back it's seat. It's zombie mom now. And there's like a zombie face that is unlike any other character we've seen, and it's over a red background, which is not remotely relevant to anything. It's just like a piece of stock footage that they slapped in the it's end of the movie. It's so dumb. absolute dog shit this is the worst bad 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 this movie's bad bad, bad. bad. and the it's, person who made it should be deeply ashamed of themselves the, you know that scene where the cop is getting the blowjob in the back seat yes is that a cop that was the cop that was one of the cops oh i didn't put that together okay uh that was Sh uh, schmidt the, the sure right one. yes so i thought the per the woman given given the blowjob was the mom oh because they look relatively the same they look similar and yeah. then the flashback the mom or the, the dad basically called the mom a prostitute a, a prostitute yeah i was like oh cool he's, he's getting the rorschach origin got it that would have been interesting but I was, but, well, he, no 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 here's the thing 
if the mom was already gone, who's giving the blowjob? That wasn't the mom. No, if th- that's why my brain connected wrong. Oh, because the only person who could give the blowjob if that's how it worked would have been Harris. Oh, <laughs> I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah, it's just a different. A- it's just a different character. Mm-hmm. It's just a she different looks woman. Similar. They look similar-ish, but I didn't. I didn't think they were the same. Anyway. To be fair, but I was like, wait, what? My, are you my brain about? put that together, and I was like, like, oh. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, bad, bad. Fuck you, bad, bad. Uh, we have po- our we do fucking <laughs> t- uh, uh, patreon.com slash GB or BB support us. Give money by a uh, podcast called This Film is Lit. I, I think I'm suffering heat stroke. Kyle, yes. so I'm going to try to get through this. Uh, called This Film is Lit. We're talking about movies that are based on books. When this episode, our most recent episode will have been our Halloween episode, which I believe is Carrie this year. I oh, think we're doing boy. Carrie, the original Carrie. So look out for that. Um, they're all gonna laugh at me. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's what the director of this movie should have been thinking when before he published it, <laughs> and then maybe he would have stopped. Ouch, so. Brian Savage. Uh, you can support us at T Public. Just search that. It's all in the yep. description. Bye. Check out, get your cool stuff. No, uh, so let's not go out on that load. Happy Halloween! Yay! Yay! Celebrate safely. Hope you have a good time. I don't know when this comes out, but hopefully a couple days before Halloween. Brian, right, we're gonna have to end this episode because. Uh, I've been drinking. And I've been Robert Zadarin. (laughs) 